Revision time, I guess. Well, you see, for the alpha, I did put together a similar list of five things I liked and disliked, to put it kindly. Today, I bring you my top five best things about Odyssey, and maybe it will sell you on this idea for space legs. Or at least it will give you some appreciation for the poor employees whose work was shat upon by the higher-ups that decided it's a great idea to shove this thing out unready. Number five is plant life. Now, back in the day when we saw the new additions to the space, you know, the weird phenomenomenomenoms like the ones you see on the screen right now, I saw a bit more detail in those models and, well, it gave a bit more life to the universe. Because all else we saw moving in space before that was... Well, some Targoid crap and maybe some brain trees and that's it. However, now we see a much wider selection of plants on those atmospheric planets and in a much wider, greater overall mass than before. You don't need to go to a single point on the planet anymore to find a plant thing. Now just pick a direction and go. And before you know it, you'll find something interesting and pretty. The textures, as well as the model detail, shows that the artists over at Frontier managed to make something of good quality, despite their higher-ups being pieces of shit and pushing this expansion out when it was not ready. Or was this the outsourced models and art that you keep hearing about from Glassdoor reviews? Hmm, I wonder. Number four is, a, well, kind of a weird one for me. Since I film a lot in many places, I often forget about the little details and only realize their existence once I review the footage. This kind of happened with voice acting and dialogues within Starports. Considering where we are, the prices aren't bad. Uh-huh. Assuming you're not after something ridiculous, you shouldn't be too disappointed. Hmm, yeah. I need someone with steady nerves and even steadier aim. That you? And especially with engineers. So what will it be? Suit mods? Weapon mods? Brain mods? Actually, I, I can't do brain mods. Last time I got yelled at- What do you want spit shined? You'll excuse me if I skip the small talk. I have some tea brewing in my private quarters that I don't want to spoil. In fact, maybe you can help me out. New automated weapons are being sketched out every day. There's always a new calculation or alloy variant being tested. Bring me defense data to help inspire my ideas. Thanks for the data. This will be very useful. In return, I'll point you towards one of the smartest men I know, Wellington Beck. For top quality mods, he's definitely a name worth remembering. It's nice to see a little bit more variety of sound than just beeps, boops and radio chatter for once. However, the aforementioned shithead leaders of the company did not give Elite Team enough time to polish animations and, well, you constantly will see animations missing or, well, looking worse than in 2003. <sighs> just imagine if this was given actual time to be finished. What a shame. With number three, here we come to the tools. Yes, the three new tools and their easy, somewhat intuitive use. Frankly, I don't like the look of any of them, but that aside, I still somewhat am struck by the actual pleasure of casually whipping out a tool and sensually using it on a port or a person. Mm. I know that with the controller, the laser cutter is a hot garbage and, I mean, even with the mouse it's actually quite janky as well, but even so, I feel that the other tools should not suffer due to the black sheep's deformation, if you will. So it's nice work on the simple design and decent implementation code-wise. Also, fuck the higher-ups, again. Uh, oh, fine, I'll stop now. Number two is a genuine surprise. The new feed tutorial came out of nowhere for me. It was not in alpha or elsewhere. It was genuinely surprising and pleasant to see Elite boot up. Huh, damn it, that was a pun. Anyways, then drop you in a handmade, well voiced, and paced tutorial mission that even explains a few little things about the game and its universe. Still, if you don't listen and just rush through it, you can break the tutorial in mere seconds. That's kinda sad that there is no proper coding to check if you have skipped parts or you have ran ahead. But oh well, I guess we know why that happened. Regardless, I said that I wanted more intimate and curated tutorial after that September update in which they delivered a very similar type tutorial for ships. And seeing it here, right now, being delivered in kind of a way... Yeah, thank you, please more! Your game really needs it, trust me. 
And number one, I mean, what else could it be? But the Space Legs Perspective, ability to walk around and actually feel like it's your body and you're not just piloting an oversized Brit with the thrusters up its asshole. I mean, American. The constant reminder how small you are to the SRV or your ship is a very refreshing feeling that some had actually waited years, maybe even decades. Well, sure, we'll get used to that feeling of the wow factor of the ship scale and all that stuff, but well, in fact, I have already. But the sense of scale is a constant now. It really grabs the hold of you and forces you to bask in the ship's rear thrusters. Oh, yes. The thrusters. Oh, well, you thought it was done. Well, not exactly. Well, there is one ability that Odyssey gave us all to use, and without a doubt, it takes the zero spot. Ability to go back and play the old version of Horizons. And you know what? Say it with me. The upper management of Frontier can go get... I did also want to include a few little positives to share, so here goes the honor mentions. Elevator music! <laughs> yes, it exists, and it's such a stupid piece of this game, I love it. It's the first bit of that casual silliness that this game has ever produced among the drab, dreary, leaky, horrible edgelord universe building. So props. A little bit of levity finally is here. And no, I'm not counting those stupid names. The look of the skies in atmospheric worlds. Yes, that apparently is a simple shader, but smartest things often are simple, yet somehow still feel magical. Seriously though, shaders are magic. I once did try to learn how to program shaders. Even something simple. And my brain exploded. The movement mechanics. I describe these during Alpha as soft and comfortable. Velocities and accelerations are coded pretty well to complement low gravity setting, which is the most of the time in Elite Dangerous, though it kind of falls flat on the higher G planets, but regardless, still, it's nice. Oh, and SRV got weirder now. In a good way, as it drives over bigger obstacles and things. Not sure if it's uh, actual change or it just simply does work, but well, considering that the environment now is more littered with more rocks and whatnot else, it is helpful that SRV does drive over more things than just uh, small little pebbles or flat ground. And with that, the list is over. Of course, this is my list, so hey, if yours differs, do comment down below. And don't forget, the worst list is also coming out soon, so do check that one once it uh, goes, so uh, subscribe, you know. And hey, maybe if you enjoy these kinds of lists, I have made a few of them at least, so there's a playlist indeed as well, so feel free to watch all of them. Still, all of this is possible, of course, thanks to the great support from YouTube members and patrons, so if you too want to join in on that uh, supporting bunch, well, check out the link down below for those things. Uh, oh, and of course, I did release my 100,000 subscriber milestone t-shirt design just recently, so maybe uh, if a shirt is your game, well, there's a merch store available too. As for now, that's about it, and remember, screw the upper management.